Hello everyone, Helen here. How are you doing? Hope you're doing okay. Uh, thanks for stopping by to come and see me today. And uh, if you're new here, a very big welcome. I live in Durham in the northeast of England and this is my craft room where I'm often found chatting to you most weeks. Sometimes though I'm off in my camper van but uh, yeah, this week I am in my craft room and I'm going to be chatting to you about really being an untidy person. <laughs> that's that's the main that's my main topic today. And uh, yeah, so uh, and be before we finish, I'm going to take you out on a little trip we had a few weeks ago actually, and I still hadn't shared the video with you. So we're, we're going to go off to a little visit to the seaside a little bit later on. So yes, um, <laughs> to the subject of a tidiness or not, as the case may be. I think if you just, just the glimpses that you get of my craft room when I chat to you from here uh, would probably lead you to think that I'm a pretty organised person and that possibly that I'm very tidy too. Uh, but, well, you would be right on the organised part, but tidy? Mm, no, not really. I'm really not. And uh, yes, so yeah, I've been thinking recently about can you be organised and yet not tidy? And I've come to the conclusion that actually you can be because that's that's how I am really. And uh, yes, so yes, and by organised, I mean in, in the terms of um, having things sorted out so that you know where to go and find things or put things away and so that it's nice and clear that it's it's everything is easily accessible and yeah def definitely that applies to a craft room if you want it to be usable and to me tidy is just where all the surfaces are clear the floor and the settee and the table here <laughs> is just all you know nice and clear and yeah, so I've come to the conclusion that you can be tidy and untidy and organised, but I think it's also possible to be um, an, a tidy person, but a bit disorganised. So I'm not really going to question that bit at the moment. I'm not going to discuss that. Just going to share my experiences uh, with you of being a bit of an untidy person. So in my craft room, I've organised the storage so that most things do have a home and many of the boxes are labelled so that I can see at a glance where to find things. Uh, but my problem is that I am not very good at putting things away as soon as I've finished using them. Uh, it's inevitable that while you're busy doing a craft project you're going to have quite a few things out maybe. The place will look a bit cluttered for a little bit of a while but then it's it's not good when you haven't when you finish one project and then you start another one without putting the first uh, things away. <laughs> things start to pile up and the place starts to look very cluttered. And I've tried to make my storage easily accessible, so not just for getting things out, but for also for putting things away. From time to time, I'll just decide that a problem has become so big that uh, I really need to address the problem. And... So that, that's really what I'm sharing with you today because my most recent one was a problem with my knitting needles and specifically my double pointed needles. I do a lot of knitting projects that use double pointed needles and as you may know I often have several projects on the go at once. And so very often when I come to start a new project I find that there are no double pointed needles of the correct size in the place where I store them. And this doesn't necessarily mean that the size that I want is actually even in current use. It's just that they might have been slotted into my pot of crochet hooks or lying on a table somewhere or languishing in the bottom of a project bag, uh, you know, with a project that's long finished. And even just sometimes placed randomly into my box of double pointed needles, which makes them get more mixed up with a range of other sizes of needles. So my double pointed needles do have a storage box to themselves on a shelf in my craft room. Uh, the crochet hooks live in a pot. 
and sometimes I do lazily pop double pointed needles into there. For ages now I've been keeping double pointed needles in travel toothbrush holders. I don't know where I got the idea from, Pinterest or somewhere I think. And they're labelled according to their needle size. Um, although sometimes I've got more than one size per holder, which isn't so good for double pointed needles because it's not always easy to see what size they are. Uh, they, they do quite often have the the size written onto them, but they, that can wear away, you know, with lots of use. And so I came up with an alternative solution. I gathered all of my double pointed needles together, uh, except the ones currently in use, and taking them out of the finished projects and all sorts of other places where they were squirreled away or just lazily plonked down somewhere, and then on some scrap bits of paper, I wrote different needle sizes. Although if you're very observant, you'll see that I accidentally missed out 2.5 millimetre, which I had to add in later. Then I started measuring every single needle and placed them on the correct piece of paper. It took me absolutely ages to do this, but eventually every needle was in the correct group and ready to be put into their new home. So I'd managed to buy some plastic tubes uh, with some screw top lids that were just long enough to hold my longest double pointed needles. My double pointed needles are either 20 centimetres, which I think is approaching eight inches, or 15 centimetres, which is about six inches long. And then I wrote a label for each tube and I proceeded to put just one set of needles in each tube. So that's a minimum of four, or maybe five or six needles um, as a set. And that meant that for some sizes, especially the thinner needles, I needed more than one tube. I had thought that 25 tubes, which was the minimum I seemed to be able to buy, would be far too many tubes. And uh, well, it turned out to be not quite enough. <laughs> um, so I'm still keeping some of the toothbrush holders to store some of the thicker sizes of needles. Um, as I put the new tubes away in the storage box, which was actually a perfect width for these tubes, I discovered that actually I had too many now to allow me to put the lid on. So for the moment, I'm just leaving the lid off until I decide what to do about that problem. But I mean, really, I've got far more double pointed needles than I really need. And I confess that, well, it wouldn't be like this if I'd always put them away after I'd finished using them. But instead, when I haven't been able to find the size I've needed, I've, um, you know, I've gone off and bought another set of needles. So I'm really hoping that I've got the situation under control now. Um, I can easily pop the correct tube of double pointed needles uh, into a project bag and still have other sets of the same size to use if I need them. And well, I'll let you know if my efforts have been worth the time and the money that I've spent on, on this new system. So I'll, I'll finish off this little chat uh, by giving you some tips maybe on how to stop being so untidy if that's a problem. And if, if you're a really tidy person, you can just sit back and relax at this point. <laughs> so my first tip is in the first place, just to forgive and accept yourself exactly as you are. Um, you're not a bad person just because you're messy. It, it's just can be just the way you are. Um, and so just accept that that's how you are. Secondly, just start small. Try and get into a daily habit. Um, maybe set a timer for, you know, a, a minute, a day, at, in which to just put some few things uh, away. You could build up to 10 minutes even and just try and do that every day. Um, because completing a tiny task can be psychologically very rewarding. Um, my third tip is maybe to just enlist some help to get you started from just from somebody else. Uh, when I was a teenager with a very messy bedroom, my dad used to come in and sit on my bed when I said that I wanted to tidy my room. And he would just say, point to a pile and say, right, just do that pile. And so I would sort out the pile and put the things away or whatever. And then he'd say, right, um, 
could just do that pile on the shelf there. And before I knew it, I was really into the tidying and it, it would just be able to slip away without me noticing really and I would get on and finish my bedroom. Um, a fourth tip is that perhaps you can decide to make decluttering a priority. Um, it is hard work, but it really is worth the time spent on it. Probably the most useful self-help help book that I've ever bought is Clear Your Clutter with Feng Shui. It is really a brilliant book. It's helped me lots of times in the past to do a bit of decluttering. Um, and its principles and advice apply just as much to a craft room as anywhere else. Um, tip number five is just to find organising systems that you love. You know, if you want pretty colours or what have you, that's fine. If you just want something plain and practical, absolutely fine. You just, just find something that really suits you. And then finally, my tip number six is not to beat yourself up if your systems get messed up. It's inevitable that you're going to lapse uh, back into a bit of messiness. But hopefully, if you've developed some good habits, you can you can just get back into them to get yourself there. Uh, take things in hand again. <laughs> I'm just going to take you off on a little trip now to a place that I love. It's one of my absolute favourite places in the whole world. I um, can't remember if I've taken you there before, maybe to the beach, uh, but uh, I, I, I definitely haven't taken you to uh, where I'm taking you today, the Castle and Priory in Tynemouth. And Tynemouth is on the northeast coast and has the most beautiful beaches. I always tell my family that they are the best beaches in the world. Obviously, you know, there are beaches that might might uh, equal them and that actually have more, warmer water. But, you know, Tymouth is an absolutely brilliant place. And in fact, it's the first place that I lived when I was a newborn baby. My parents lived in um, oh, a little attic flat just um, right, at, right at the top of, a, you know, a several storey house, but in a lovely location. Although their flat was at the back, they didn't even have a view of the sea. Uh, but yes, hopefully you can see here in this little, little bit of video um, where it was that I very first lived. Anyway, so, so Time Out is a very special place to me. And my mum doesn't live too far from there now, and my sister and my daughter. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really nice place to go and visit. And Tynemouth Castle and Priory have got such an interesting history. And I, I can't really begin to tell you the whole history of it in, in a short space of time. But I'm just going to give you a little taste of it um, and a, a little bit about the history in my video that's coming up now.
I hope you enjoyed going on that little trip and uh, I think I'm going to finish there for today so uh, keep yourself nice and busy and take good care of yourself and I will be back again very soon. Okay then, bye!